We love retinoids, but do you know what some retinoids do? They burn people's faces because they are intense. Now, what is adapalene? Adapalene is often referred to as like the sister or the cousin retinoid that's supposed to be safe for sensitive skin. But if you've got sensitive skin or if you wanna try a retinoid, but you've had some bad experiences with the super potent ones, or you just wanna try something that is cruelty free, this is going to be your how-to guide. Adapalene gel is actually something that I used to use when I was younger, but didn't fully understand how it works. And today we're gonna to talk about the science of it. Understanding how this ingredient actually binds to receptors inside of our skin, how to actually use this, what you should know before you use it, and also what makes this one from Acne Free different from things like Differin, which yes, I have used before. And again, this is from Acne Free. It is cruelty free, and we are working with them on today's video, but that does not change any of my opinions or the hard science behind Adapalene and how it works. So let's get started with what are retinoids. You know that retinoid is an umbrella term. It's these vitamin A molecules. Retinol is what we see over the counter quite often, Retinaldehyde is the most potent you can get over the counter without a prescription, but retinoic acid is the most potent form. You can only get that in a prescription format. And um, yes, it's intense. A lot of people have this retinization period where their skin actually has to get used to a retinoid because of how intense it is. But for the first time, this, which used to be prescription only, is available over the counter and it has been for a little while. But this is a dapolene gel, but it's slightly different. Now, what's interesting is that this still binds to the same receptors in your skin that retinoid retinoic acid does. Retinoic acid, the big potent prescription stuff that our skin naturally makes. And if this binds to the same receptor, but if it's less irritating because it's like a cousin molecule, that means that less people are going to have the itching, the peeling, and the redness that is normally associated with retinoid use. So before we even get into talking about like how to incorporate this into your teen, why the heck should you? Yes, this one is from Acne Free and it does help with acne. We're talking whiteheads, we're talking blackheads, we're talking non-medical, non-nodular cystic acne. If you have of minor cystic acne and your derm approves it. This used to be a prescription only product that you had to get from your derm. And again, it is now available over the counter. But the cool thing about this is that it's also FDA approved, which means that the Food and Drug Administration has actually tested this and proven this to be helpful for acne. But because it is in this retinoid family, yes, it helps with other things as well. There's medical evidence to show that Adapalene gel also helps with hyperpigmentation. And yes, it helps with anti-aging and wrinkles and fine lines and things of that nature. Because of the way retinoids work, they kind of regulate and increase your skin cell turnover. So let's say that your skin cells make X amount within 28 days, this is going to speed that up. It's gonna bump it up a notch, which is also why some people peel, but it's also why some people have this retinoid glow that we often associate with retinoid use and that plumping of some of those fine lines and wrinkles. Retinoids, including adapalene, have also been shown to help with sunspots, some of these actinic keratoses that come from sun exposure. They're kind of this precancerous growth. And again, let me make this very clear. If you think you have a precancerous growth on your face, go to the dermatologist. Don't consult a YouTube video. Don't consult a medical esthetician. Don't hang out here on the internet or god forbid on a reddit forum go to the doctor and make sure that it's not skin cancer but for those who are worried about acne or the hyperpigmentation that acne can leave behind or for fine lines and wrinkling and graceful aging this is a really great option that is affordable and it's accessible and yes you can get it without a prescription even though you used to need one or $21.99 but the question becomes you know why would I choose this over different or over a prescription option remember this retinoic acid it's made naturally by our bodies but when when you apply it to the skin, it is bioavailable. Bio meaning life, available meaning available. So your skin can just take it in and use it. Whereas if you're using HPR or retinol or retinal, your skin has to transform an HPR molecule into a retinol, into a retinaldehyde, into the retinoic acid, right? And if you have retinol, which we have probably all tried over the counter, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, has to be converted into retinol and then into retinoic acid. But this right here, it binds exactly to the same receptors, the RAR and the RXR receptors. And this can actually influence how your skin cells and the DNA within your skin cells works to kind of renew and refresh them. So again, regulating that skin cell turnover, making sure that these little skin cells don't get stuck and clogged inside of the pores, which can A, lead to more glowing skin and B, less breakouts, but also speeding up and regulating that skin cell turnover so that the skin is actually plump and looks hydrated and um, helps with those fine lines, those wrinkles and that dullness. And yes, even scars, fun fact, even scars. I actually attribute, you know, a 
lot of my acne scarring and my mitigation of that to the use of retinoids. I wasn't using a prescription retinoid for a good four to five years, but then when I restarted, I had done some other things like chemical peels and medical microneedling. But when I got back on retinoids, my skin just, my scars just changed. And looking at the acne that I had with my scars, they still impact me greatly. I still look at them and feel insecure on certain days and they remind me of what I've gone through, but I'm trying to see them as like marks of strength and ability instead of like a scar to hide. And I do attribute retinoids to helping me mitigate the way those look because based on the acne that I had, I should have gotten much worse scarring. But thankfully I knew how to take care of my skin a little bit <laughs> and then I was able to make things a little bit better with the products that I chose to use and the treatments that I chose to get. But back to the formula, why would we choose this versus another over-the-counter retinol, which you totally could. Again, this is bioavailable, so it binds directly to those receptors, but this is also oil-free. So if you're someone who doesn't want an oily, greasy mess, we know that acne can often be attributed to oil production in the skin. This doesn't have a bunch of excess oil. This is also fragrance-free for those who are sensitive, and because it is adapalene, adapalene is medically proven to be better for sensitive skin. It is less sensitizing than retinoic acid, which is that prescription stuff. And here's my favorite part. This is not only dermatologist tested, but dermatologist approved. Remember, a dermatologist could try a product and be like, this sucks and chuck it at a wall. But that is still technically dermatologist tested. Looking for dermatologist approved actually means that the dermatologist tried it and approves of it and likes it, which yes, this is. And as we've discussed, there are other non-prescription adapalene gels on the market. Again, I've partnered with Differin before, but I no longer recommend them because look at the price and look at the cost. Differin does have 15 grams of adapalene gel for between $12 and 26 cents to kind of $15.99, which ends up being three to $6 more than the acne-free one costs. The acne-free one, if you get the 45 gram larger tube is between $27.49 and $29.99, depending on where you get it. And if you do go for the larger size, the 45 gram one, the Differin one is between, I think like $27.49 to $29.99 is what I was able to find it for online. And that is, you know, $6 to $8 more expensive than the acne-free one. And it's the exact same molecule. It is adapalene, which again, used to be prescription only, but it is no longer, which is why it is free and accessible to everyone. And don't get me wrong, I understand patents. I understand why protecting intellectual property is important, but when it comes to people's health information and like their medical care and acne, I do believe a lot of these things should be accessible and affordable and make that available to customers who don't wanna spend an arm and a leg to get really good prescription strength skincare. So how do you use it? If you remember, most people who start a retinoid, especially the prescription ones, go through this retinization period. They go through this period where their skin has to get used to it. And while the same thing happens here, it's not as intense. And if you have super, super, super sensitive skin, you're still gonna wanna take it slow, but it's going to be a lot better than if you're applying straight up Tret to your skin. So the first thing is that you want to apply this to dry skin. A lot of people like to apply their moisturizers over like a moist serum or a toner, which for most other skincare ingredients and products is a great idea, but that actually increases the penetration of retinoids, which can cause irritation. So with retinoids, especially if you're sensitive, I recommend, and most dermatologists recommend, starting with a pea size amount and applying that onto dry skin. And again, this is oil-free and this is fragrance-free, so it should be safer for sensitive skin. But even if you do have dry skin, you can get away with this. And if you're really worried about either irritation or about dry skin, you can do what some people on TikTok have called sandwiching. And it's basically applying a thin layer of moisturizer, then applying your retinoid, your acne-free adapalene gel, and then going back in with another layer of moisturizer. And that really helps with dry skin, it helps to lock things in, but it also kind of adds a little barrier of protection. And so the retinoid can get into the skin at a little bit of a slower pace, so it's not as intense. Something else you can do is titrate. So instead of using this every single day, use a small pea size amount, maybe two days out of the week. Then you can increase that to three days, to four days, up to every day. And there's a myth that you can't use retinoids during the daytime, not true. I and many dermatologists do recommend using retinoids at night because they're more effective. But if you really wanted to, you can use a retinoid during the day. Just remember that during the day, sunlight degrades retinoids. So you wanna make sure that you're wearing a sunscreen. You wanna make sure that you are protecting your skin and it's probably going to be more efficacious at night. But if you really wanted to use it during the day, you totally could. The great thing about this being a synthetic molecule, being something that was made is that we can 
actually target where it binds to receptors in the skin and make it less irritating than what our body creates naturally. And because of that, it's also available over the counter. Now, doesn't necessarily mean that you can't go wrong with it. There can be some problems if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Of course, I still recommend not using anything in the retinoid family just to be safe. But if you found that retinol doesn't work or if it's too irritating to you or if the ones you find over the counter have a bunch of fragrance or if you find that prescription strength is just too much or you can't get a prescription, you're literally looking at something that is either under 10 or 20 bucks, depending on the size that you get, that is cruelty-free, fragrance-free, oil-free, and yes, dermatologist recommended and approved, but also Cassandra Banks and recommended and approved. I remember when I was 16, I was trying to get a prescription for like all of these adapalene gels. This is the 0.1%. I was on the 0.3%. I was on freaking everything. And it was a nightmare. You had to get a recommendation or a referral to the derm because I was on an HMO plan. Then you had to wait to see the derm. Then you had to see the derm. They look at you for 15 minutes and they rush you off because, you know, insurance sucks. You have to go fill this script at the pharmacy. Then the pharmacy doesn't have your prescription. So you have to go to a different pharmacy. Then they're going to charge you like 500 bucks for it because your insurance doesn't cover it. Then you're going to ask for generic and you hope to God you can get a prescription that you know how to use. And by the time you're there, you know, it's been six months and you feel even worse and more depressed about your skin. And the fact that that has all changed because this is no longer gate kept by prescription only, the fact that it is cruelty free, that it is accessible, that it is available, that it is inexpensive, and it's something that doesn't stain my pillow sheets makes the 16 year old acne sufferer inside of me very, very happy. I actually don't even know where you can get this. I know you can get it at drugstores. I know you can get it online, but I will leave any links that I have in the bottom tab below. And if you've tried this and have sensitive skin, let me know how it does or doesn't work for you. Always remember to stay hydrated, reapply that sunscreen over your retinoid, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.